Hi, everyone. Welcome to Addington News. I'm back in the country, which is pretty cool and a bit of a nostalgic, I suppose, or historic last Addington News for you, Dee Williams. You're uh, you're wrapping things up at Addington Raceway and over four decades in the sport. I don't want to get too emotional. I know you don't even want it mentioned, but... Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun along the way, and, and both of us have been associated with Addington for such a long period of time. I suppose when you when you close the door on on this part of your career, um, there'll be plenty of uh, reflection. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about, Greg. Over the years, uh, a lot of people, a lot of horses, obviously, but a lot of people. Um, not only the administrators and uh, staff, at, you know, throughout the clubs and HRNZ and everyone else, but a lot of the trainers and stuff. You know, when I started out. Uh, I think the first day of my job here at Addington 40 years ago was going to the trials and I couldn't believe I was being paid to to talk to Felix Newfield and Jack Carmichael and these people and it was just like a kid in a candy shop, to be honest. I love, love the sport, always have done. Um, and, yeah, time for a change. But, um, yeah, 40 years makes me feel old. I was obviously well and truly interested before I started working here as a, a very young kid. So, um you know, there's a, a lot of change and a lot of uh, a lot of excitement over the years. A lot of fun. Yeah, uh, we're going to get a chance on Trot's Talk on Sunday to go over some of those uh, moments with you, and uh, we'll do that. And anyone who wants to tune in, they can uh, via the SENZ app, or it'll be on HRNZ. Uh, just scroll down and find the Kiwi Harness, and you'll be able to um, yeah reflect on on some of, some of your achievements, but also some of the great moments. Um, that you've had not only here at Addington Raceway, but obviously with HRNZ for such a long period of time. Um, last week was a good week here at Addington Raceway. The first four races on Friday night, Herb was outstanding. Uh, first up for Regan Todd, Graham Hand and, and Robbie Close. Thought that was a great run. Hit him ups, winning the maiden trot, beating the river boy, had to be seen to be believed. And uh, of course the stewards had a look to see how far he galloped. It was at 140 metres. Um, I, th- I thought light up the moon's win in the Darren de Philippi, which is always, you know, a really important race for so many reasons. Um, yeah, every year we get a chance to reflect on a young man taken uh, way too early. So, uh, yeah, I thought, and even Kawai Nuggets win for the chairman and his wife, you know, that was um, that was that was pretty cool in race three. So the early part of the program I thought was great. And then, of course, you had Andrew Stewart's uh, Stewart Racing race, race Day on Sunday and speaking with Andrew, he said they had a great time. So, um, yeah, good week here last week. And what's more, the turnover and the GBR, probably the best we've had this year. Yeah, look, uh, and quite incredible after stakes were paid and meeting costs were taken out, there was still over a quarter of a million in profit there. Uh, doesn't happen every week, but it was pleasing that it did. Uh, happened at the meeting up north as well. They did really well with a margin about 30%. So, um, yeah, not so good, I guess, for the punters, but um, the the profitability of those meetings last week, all three of them uh, across the country, really good for the code. So, uh, pleasing to see. You know, look, uh, as you touched on all, all of the information on Friday night, some really exciting stuff. Andrew had a great day with his team on Sunday, uh, managed to catch up with them after the races uh, for a quick beer, and uh, he had a winner at, uh, where was it? Jamie Mott drove, rode it anyway in Australia um, well, and managed to be yelling for a galloper at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, so it's been great having these trainers' days. This week, uh, Jack Harrington combines with Benevet, who he's doing some work with too, uh, and I think our last one is actually KB Electrics, who put together a whole package, including signage. So um, that'll wrap things up. So yeah, it's been that'll be fun too, Greg. Ah, uh, he's <laughs> he's a bit of humour, ice cream, and his uh, and his crew, his Linwood crew. So we look forward to uh, to having them. Just on spectators, uh, we've got the specials. You got you got a few of them to roll out in your last week. Yeah, so the roast goes through to this Sunday. So it's actually proved popular over the winter period. So that finishes this Sunday. The new menu in Spectators started last week, so it's operating as well now. Um, we're changing um, operating systems on the tills and things at the moment. So that new menu will be the one that operates through the first part of August, and then they'll pick it up with another special as all of that bed's in. But the roast has actually proved quite popular, particularly on those cold days and and. Uh, actually reasonably popular with a few trainers who have, uh, by the time they put their horses away in the stalls and come and grab a bite to eat, they might as well be having a roast. So, um, yeah, look, it, it's gone well. Watch out for those specials. The team do a really good job at trying to rotate that, keeping it fresh, but there's plenty else on the menu that's uh, proved popular, and it's proved popular with the trainers' days as well. They've been having 
all sorts of smoked meats and things in, in their, their sort of collection of food that's been available to their participants and their, their clients. So that's worked well as well. Yeah, it has, and, and we're really appreciative of their support. And from what I can gather, most of them are keen to come back. Hey, we're going to do a full meeting preview. It is the Winter Rewards Night, so some great stake money for those that have been supporting this place. And, um, you know, it's reflected in, in the stakes that are on offer this week. I thought Spirit of Anarchy's performance was stunning last time. No reason why it can't win race six. And I reckon there's a rating special here on Thursday night. Evangelist gets in beautifully to race number seven, so race seven, number nine. But we can get into the full meeting preview anyway. Yeah, look, one thing I just do want to touch on, Greg, is just the work that the track team did, uh, particularly after races last Friday. But Jules Day, uh, when it rained here, we had 71 mils in the gauge by the end of the day. Obviously, it rained during the day. Before we started racing last Sunday, there was 80 mils in the gauge. Before we started racing, it continued raining through the day. They're running home in 57 in a couple of the races. Drivers yeah. weren't getting covered in the track because it had been prepared properly. Um, absolutely rat for the team. You know, it's it's their job, um, but they are passionate about it. Uh, John Denton, Jeff Denton, um, and the rest of the crew, Chunky, uh, Chris, and, and the, uh, you know, I don't want to leave anyone out, but all of the team that put that together mean that we can race safely and continue to race in inclement weather. Um, there was a wee bit of water lying around, but they did a good job with that as well. So big shout out to them. It's important. And obviously it meant that we were able to make some money on the day. So that was good. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Let's have a look at the full meeting preview for this week. Race number one gets underway on Thursday night. Remember, it's a dual code meeting, so that always makes spectators reasonably busy. Uh, 12 races from the dogs and 10 from us. Uh, race one for us is the IRT Your Horse Our Passion Mobile Pace at 1980, and that gets underway 4.56. Yeah, Rosie Richter looked home until Herb came onto the scene last time and her performance the previous run was excellent as well, finishing second uh, behind Tornado Banner. So it's probably her race to lose. Judine gets a good barrier draw, though, has been working in her first couple of runs and I thought she was uh, pretty good last time. So she gets her chance. Don Juan racing well, not a lot of luck. And Better Lover showed ability in its last campaigns, trial quite nicely. The old firm, Brendan Hill, Ricky May. Eight, four, six and seven in the first. Race number two is the first leg of the early quaddy. Paige Nickel, uh, Eddington's biggest supporter, Trot, 2,000 metres, 5.26. And Nigel Armstrong and the Unhinged team did a big article on Paige a couple of uh, well, three or four meetings ago. We decided we'd name a race after her. She loves Addington. She comes with a grandmother pretty much every race meeting, loves the horses, and always the hell out of John Dunn. Yeah. Uh, tells him that he's number two and Dexter's number one, so she reminds him of that most meetings. Uh, but we wanted to acknowledge Paige. She's been at every meeting through this winter period. She comes every night anyway, but right through this winter period as well. So naming a race after, she'll get a bit of a kick out of that. And, of course, uh, uh, Bruce Negus has got a horse in called Paige, which yeah. goes quite good later on, Greg. <laughs> but race number two is the Paige Nickel Addington's biggest supporter trial. Yeah, and she'll blow up at me because I haven't got John Dunn in four here. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Lavra Solitaire, she might not sleep Wednesday night. She'll be that excited about her race. Uh, it's the first leg of that quaddy. Uh, Robbie Close and Regan Todd, Lavra Solitaire, very good performance first up. Plenty of reading about it. Big winning chance. Monsignors trialled nicely. Miss Katie Cox, she's doing a great job, isn't she? Having a wonderful 2023. Um, like the way this horse is trialled. She, uh, he rather is a son of Father Patrick. A lot to like about him. Uh, Lookalike Low Bell. Uh, I think it was a late nomination, this, but uh, Lynn and Justin Smith, no surprise to see a five-year-old. They always let them take uh, take their time. Some direction, one over 20 races. It's uh, out of her by Majestic Sun. Um, oh, look, I can't see any reason why it won't find its way into the top four. And Opawa Peak's getting more consistent uh, for Kyle Cameron. So I'll put it into eight, five, two, and nine. Race number three, Fat Eddie's 2023 Winter Rewards Mobile Pace 2600, 556, the first of the Winter Rewards for the Paces. And great to have the Oxford Group of Hotels as part of our sponsorship team this year here at Addington Greek. Yeah, it is. Uh, I remember this time last year it being really difficult to find the winner of these races and 
I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely facing the same thing here. I ended up going for a par with Louis, who's been ultra consistent lately. This one trained by Aaron Swain, John Dunn in the bike, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I think it's got a really good winning chance. Full of Desire was excellent two starts back, and I don't think it got all favours last time. It still ran on okay. So I like it from a handy barrier draw too. The key to these races is 2,600 as well. So um, it's a bit of a change from, you know, more often than not, we race over the 1950. Uh, gave he Sanders an excuse, a chance, because I don't want to not have a quaddy ticket with it on if it gets the right run, because it'll be it'll be powering home. And, um, yeah, I, I want to have it there somewhere. And Big Mama Morris has been racing in superb form, so I don't want to have it off my quaddy ticket either. 3, 4, 11, and 13, but you could keep writing the numbers down here. Judgment Bay, Hilda Maud, Take My Breath Away, Patch of Gold, Riddles Rufus. Mate, if you can mark that F on your ticket... Go for your life. This is one of those meetings, Greg, if you've been following a horse, regardless of what it's paying, have something on it like you always have done because you can really get some false odds and these fields are that even. Race number four is the XEM Sport 2023 Winter Rewards Handicap Trot, the first of two of these. Again, 2,600, and this one at 626. Yeah, I thought Bruce Negus held the key. Paige, you mentioned before, very good last start win by her. Um, she gets into this race beautifully just off the 10 metres, so no reason why she couldn't win again. Buffy Northstains was second to her and, and actually, you know, went a great race, I thought. Um, so would only need to go as well again. Then you're around Izia, who I think's better at 2,000 metres, but she's in form. It's only a little thing, but she tries really hard for Ken Barron, Blair Orange and Jan Calvert who's a, a, been a great supporter here in Georgia of Addington for such a long period of time. And MM Sunshine's racing really well. Uh, no star, but again, this is the type of horse that the whole Winter Reward Series is about. Lines up every week or close to it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I reckon she's got a top four chance and it wouldn't surprise me if she was able to win it. So I've gone 10, 17, 9 and 7, but not an easy, easy quaddy this one. Race number five is the Hydroflow 2023 Winter Rewards Pace, a mobile 2600 at 656. Yeah, I think Ain't No Angel's the best in it, and she got bold at the start last time, so you just completely forgive her there. Prior form, really good. She's going to have to be better than them, though, because she's got to come uh, from the outside of the second row, Darren. So, yeah, I, I, I want to have her on the ticket. She's no good thing, but you definitely want to have her. Black Max Racing Super uh, has the advantage of the draw, expected to go forward. Bobby Waterhouse, excellent second last time. McCrikey, no luck last time, and I reckon it can uh, find itself somewhere near uh, the top end. Then I sort of got towards Dr. Tim, if you could spread it wider than that. But again, it's one of those races, but I've got them 14, 7, 1 and 4, and the chances don't end there. Race number six is the Philip and Glenis Kenna Bloodstock T-Roll Mobile Pace 1980-726, a small field of six horses, Greg. Spirit of Anarchy, what an impression he made, not only with his win, but he just smashed the clock in the ultimate race book at his first start. Yeah, I spoke to Trevor Casey about him actually in Australia and um, he said, look, we felt he was good enough to race in the Young Gun series, so it was no surprise that he lined up here and, and they weren't surprised anyway. Maybe there was a few didn't expect him to finish it off like that, but yeah, he powered home and why wouldn't he win again? I know there's a few first starters here. Major Hipster's a nice horse. Uh, change for the betters got a chance from that inside draw and mm -hmm. ultimatums are on the improve, but... You don't need to go as good again to win again. Six, two, one, and three. Race number seven is the Lamb and Haywood 2023 Winter Rewards Mobile Pace 2600, 756. Yep, like uh, the nine here, Evangelist uh, mentioned a rating special. Comes in as a 64, closest to it, uh, the Coleman, Champagne and Wine, they're 57s. Is there anything else here? Oh, yeah, Franco Hoppins are 59, but they're as close as you get. Uh, goes forward, last start fourth behind American Me, massive drop back here, already been a scratching, go forward horse. Tick, tick, keep on ticking. The only thing is she hasn't won over the longer distance, but she only had half a dozen starts, Darren, and, and placed in four of them. So I'm not worried about that. Really, really hard to beat, I think. Uh, Fernley Blackbird comes up with a beautiful draw. Hit the line strongly last time. The Regan Todd, Robbie Close combo. Uh, Marin Franco drops back when you consider what she's been racing. Uh, last three, Sweet Bell, Sweet Coco, Lysa Beach. So it's a very good race for Marin Franco as well. Leo Roddy's got her humming along. And the Colburn's a great follower of speed, so I'm happy to have him in the, the top four. But 
gee, it's a good race again, but I, I do really like Evangelist this week. Race number eight is the Park Canterbury 2023 Winter Awards Handicap Trot, 2600, 826. When the Fox going good? His last two runs have been excellent. Uh, Pete Davis is back in the bike. That last start before was behind Light of the Moon with Crystal Hackett uh, was in the Darren de Philippi and I can't see the reason why. It's, sometimes he steps really quickly, the Fox, and if he waltzes his way around to the front, I don't know, he takes a beating in this. So I've gone for him over Light of the Moon who was excellent last week. Uh, no reason to think that he won't be competitive again. Go away, girl. has won twice now uh, for the Brent and Tim White team. I see it's back with Stephen McRae. So, um, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why a fall would drop off for that. We know what uh, Styx is like as a trainer. And Sonny Louie's disappointed me, but the day I leave him out, Darren, is probably the day that he, he, he turns up like he did a couple of times as a three-year-old. So he's had three runs back now. He gets in off the front. He'll be he'll be somewhere near his peak, and I think I don't think James Stormont's driven a winner since he started at Freeds. I don't think so. Anyway, this could so be no. a funny look. Hmm. Eleven, nine, twelve, three. The one that showed up, Greg, on the ultimate race book last week was Jimmy Carter working home. Um, oh yeah, I didn't <laughs> turn the page. I need to turn the page. Yes, he he had been in brilliant form, obviously, and he's been set for this race all along. But um, big field to get round. It's not easy. But he was the fastest mile, fastest eight hundred, and fastest four hundred trotter here uh, last week. So yeah, he's so, in a great campaign, dude. Too, Darren, and yeah, like I say, that these type of races, the wider you can spread it, and I, I probably should have included him, but. Yeah. Oh, you keep going, Greg. They're, they're all worth including, aren't they? Brad Williamson doing a really good job with top pocket chance too. And I've just turned the page and found Spider Moment on the page. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, last page. yeah. They're everywhere. Mm. Race number yeah. nine is the first direct taxis 2023 Winter Rewards Mobile Pace 2600, the last of these ones. And this one's 856. Yeah, I went with Tempo Warrior. Um, I thought it was pretty good last week. In fact, it's been good all, all races this time in, to be honest. And um, just hit the line strongly in behind Prima Donna. When it needed the run, the run wasn't there. So lost all its momentum. Um, I can see it going forward here. And, and if it maybe maybe it gets the lead off Glenthorne, that's what happened last time. And if it does, I reckon it's the one to beat here. So I'll go for six to beat 11 King Arthur, who's flying for Joseph Gray. Uh, no reason to think it won't go a good race again. Wind me up, forgive it last time. Prior form, excellent. Sarah O'Reilly for Jason and Ian Thomas. Uh, I then had Sophia Bromack, who's been racing in super form. Leo O'Reilly takes the reins this week. But I'm going to have Lizzie Richter on the ticket as well because it didn't get much luck last time either. And how many races has Lizzie won now? Half a dozen? Yeah. So probably want it on your, on your multiple tickets. But 6, 11, 7 and 14 for me. Race number 10 is a lather up at Woodland Stud Phillies and Mears Mobile Pace 1980. The last race is at 926. Yeah, smallish field. Haley's medal gets its chance. I reckon it'll go forward. If it does, I think John Don Dunn can dictate and win this race. Over, straight flush, playing with stars, Tiger Taylor. But delightful star could win. Superstar Legends got a chance to. The Matriarchs won two of its last three. So there's there's plenty of chances in the last, but I'll, I'll settle on Haley's medal. Spectators will be open, of course, after the last. As we say, dual cope with the Greyhounds is always a bit of fun that make, uh, fills the uh, the venue up with um, both codes operating together. Uh, Sunday is the better bit race day, of course, with Jack Harrington, and we get underway at 12.38, uh, a nine-race program with the last race at 4.25, Greg, and you're going to have a look at that late quaddy, which uh, gets underway 2.54. Yep, it does. Um, tricky first leg, but Chocoloo, I reckon, is a decent chance. Bob Butt for Colin and Julie de Filippi. Bodisha and Just Holler get into the race beautifully. So I marked them two, nine, and ten in the first leg. Second leg, I reckon you need uh, a few numbers on your ticket here. Hilda Maud, um, Tower of Love, Buddy Rain, probably. Yeah, so I'd, I'll, I'll go one, three, five. Seven and nine. I reckon you need five of them in that. That's a bit of a spread, isn't it? One, three, five, seven, and nine to the third leg. Yeah, again, it, there's one leg down. You've got you've got to narrow it down. So I'm I'm just going to take four and five. Granny Rose. I oh, sorry, five and six. Five and six. I've got Danny. Uh, Racy Cruiser and a late late Prezi. I think it's going better than what its form would suggest. Gutsy play in a in a trot field like this. But I'll, I'll just take the two, five and six, and the last leg. I think you need four Oliver North who gets into a race that should be competitive in six 
Cougar Express and maybe eight Franco Messi, four, six, and eight in the last. That'll that'll do me. I don't think we've got a quarter on the Sunday yet, Tara. But as I say, all I'm doing is trying to help you out with some numbers. You you put the ones you want in, take the ones you don't like of mine out and um, and have a crack at it. And we've only got two Sundays to go and uh, we can turn the page on those. But you know, they've been they've been very successful from a club's point of view, from a, a trainers that have supported those days, along with a couple of other supporters of Addington. Um, and the fact that we're so consistent is reflected in the fields on on Thursday night because they're so deep and therefore the turnover should be good. Yeah, look, the quaddies have been paying 14, 15k. I think the pick six last week was struck with any five and paid 15,000. Well, uh, it so gives me a little difficult. bit of comfort, Darren, that it's not just me that's struggling with these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But definitely hard to find. But as we say, if you've been following one through this period, for God's sake, keep backing it yeah, because. Yeah. Um, they, they're going to pop up and I heard you talk about Lizzie Richter and Sonny Louie and you know the day that you leave them out is the day that it happens uh, and you rue it all the way down the straight I guess Yes, you do. Um, video for the week we're going to leave you with the Darren DeFilippi Memorial as we said 28 years uh, this race has been run uh, it was great to see the presentation on Harness Racing Unhinged and be present in the winning owners bar for that with all of the junior drivers taking the situation so seriously, a lot of respect for the race and respect for it being remembered at this time of the year. Um, all of the juniors desperate to win it. Uh, Sarah O'Reilly had to hand the trophy over this time to Sam Thornley, who was successful on Light of the Moon. Um, Lex and Heather Williams, such massive supporters of the industry. It was great to see Lex get a win with this horse. I know it's been a frustrating horse for uh, Robbie and Carla Holmes um, having to scratch it a number of times as odds and ends have gone wrong with it. So it was pleasing for them to get the win. And uh, we'll leave you with what was an exciting finish to the De Philippi Memorial on the way out. Enjoy th- uh, fr- uh, Thursday night it is and uh, Sunday and hopefully you're back a winner. 30.9 for the third quarter. Light of the Moon went for home. Leads by two from Gift Card. Then came the Fox. Wider out is MM Sunshine and TK Megastar. Light of the Moon, a narrow leader from Gift Card and the Fox. Light of the Moon at the 100 under the urgings of Sam Thornley. Sarah O'Reilly and Gift Card trying for dear life, but it's Light of the Moon for the Darren de Philippi Memorial. To beat home Gift Card, the Fox, and fourth across was MM Sunshine. Then TK Megastar, Emily and Katie Hawk from Swift Dream, take after me. Kink Winberg Watch, True Confessions, Tiamo Bell, Greenbank Don, Benny and the Jets, and Salvo.